I try to strive towards doing something positive with your life. I thought that was awesome. But just a little food for thought and a little bit of time for some dialogue. See those two work in the case. They are determined to nail the cross. Welcome to, to Pandy's Weekly Recaps. Well, hello. I'm Pandy of Pandy's Hair Candy and more. If this is your first time stopping by my channel, welcome. If you are already Pandy's peeps, you already know what it is. Please kick back and relax and enjoy this commentary. This is my weekly recap with Pandy. Over here, for the most part, this channel is based upon hair, both natural hair care as well as wigs. I also have product reviews, TV show reviews, game nights, and a whole lot of other content. But again, this is the weekly recap. Now, if you didn't do so on your way in, please make sure that you blow dry on that like button for your girl. I would greatly appreciate it as it greatly helps my analytics here on YouTube. Now without further ado, because there is so much going on, I'm going to go ahead and just jump into a few stories on what's been going on and just kind of recapping the most trending and viral stories that have been pretty much consuming us. And I invite you all to drop down in the comments, share your feedback, let me know what your thoughts are, whether or not you're familiar with these stories, and just feel free to interact. In fact, I welcome the feedback. Now, without further ado, I would like to go ahead and jump right on in. And this first story that I'm going to be coming to you all with is actually out of my hometown of Seattle, Washington. Now, in my hometown of Seattle, Washington, recently a felony assault charge was filed against 31-year-old Nicholas Fernandez after shooting a protester after driving into a crowd on June 7th. 2020. The King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office filed one count of assault in the first degree, a Class A felony against Fernandez for shooting in Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood. The 31-year-old Seattle man is accused of driving through a crowd and shooting a protester identified as 27-year-old Daniel Gregory. The prosecutor's office issued a statement Wednesday, and it read, Although Mr. Fernandez claims to have acted in self-defense, our laws distinguish a person protecting himself from an attack from a person who provoked the act in the first place. Given the evidence uncovered in the past three days, there's probable cause to believe Mr. Fernandez falls in the latter category, end quote. Now, the incident occurred last Sunday around 8.30 p.m. near 11th Avenue and East Pine Street. I believe that's the East Precinct. Like I said, that's my hometown. Basically, they had large crowds gathering for more than a week, pretty much protesting the death of George Floyd. Another black man killed in police custody in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now, according to the statement of probable cause, Fernandez said that he was driving in the area of the protests and thought that he could get through the crowd. He told the police that protesters then started kicking his car, yelling at him, and that people were trying to grab him through the open driver's side window. Now, Gregory was shot in the upper right arm. He suffered a broken arm as a result of the gunshot wound. Video posted on social media shows protesters getting out of the way 
of a black sedan driving towards the crowd. He told to detectives that he grabbed the steering wheel and punched the driver in the face. A woman who was at the protest told King 5 News that Gregory was shot after he had so bravely stepped up to try to stop the car. Another woman on the scene saying that the young black gentleman that so bravely stepped up to take on the car to prevent the car from running into the crowd. Now, Seattle, according to the Associated Press, for nearly a week, people have been continuing to protest, of course, the ongoing police brutality and things of that nature based on what had been taking place in Minneapolis um, with the George Floyd case. Now, what we were just covering there was you had this gentleman who says that he was driving in the area. He thought he could get through the crowd and he decided to proceed through the crowd. Now, we know that I want to say in Virginia, was it last year? There was a rally and a man plowed his car into the crowd of protesters and someone lost their life. So I imagine that these protesters here in the Seattle incident probably felt like something like that was going to occur. So the young man, Gregory, acted in haste. He approached the driver. The driver shoots him. Then he hops out of the car and he brandishes a gun. Luckily for him, it did not end tragically. He survived. And that is now an ongoing case. Now, the fallout of all that is a week after that, people are now opposing the police brutality and the racial injustice. And they basically turned a whole Seattle neighborhood into ground zero for their protests, creating like a carnival-like atmosphere with speakers and drum circles near a large abandoned police station, which was that East Precinct. Now, while protesters say it shows how people can manage without police intervention, it's drawn scorn from the 45th president, who has repeatedly threatened to, quote, go in to stop the anarchists, he says, um, who have taken over the liberal cities after officers withdrew to ease tensions. Now, Washington's governor and Seattle's mayor both Democrats have rebuked the 45th president and say local officials are trying to find a peaceful resolution following the demonstrations that turned violent last weekend with the gentleman in the car shooting the, the protester. Now, basically what's going on here in Seattle, primarily in this Capitol Hill area, which they are now referring to as the autonom autonomous zone, which stretches over several blocks in the densely packed Capitol Hill neighborhood, which is just east of downtown Seattle, and sprung up after police removed barricades near a police station on Monday of this past week and largely left the building. It came after officers used tear gas, pepper spray, and flashbangs last weekend to disperse demonstrators, and they said they were assaulted with projectiles. This is what the officers were claiming. So they pretty much have left their precinct, okay? Um, they're de-policing that entire area, and that area is now being referred to as the autonomous zone. Now, the protesters have come back with a variety of groups and interests, ranging from Black Lives Matter organizers to labor and neighborhood groups. And most want the police precinct to be turned into a community center and much of the department's funding to be redirected to health and social services. Now, in a series of tweets, the 45th president has taunted Governor Jay Inslee and Mayor Jenny Durkin, saying Seattle had been taken over by anarchists. His comments come as he's pushed for a stronger response to protesters nationwide. Following last weekend's unrest, the protests in Seattle have been largely peaceful. Now, in a Thursday interview with the Fox News Channel, the 45th president said, if we have to go in, and I quote, 
we're going in, end quote. These people are not going to occupy a major portion of a great city, end quote. In response, Durkin said, it would be unconstitutional and illegal to send military personnel into Seattle. Meanwhile, Police Chief Carmen Best said, the decision to leave the Capitol Hill precinct wasn't hers, and she wasn't angry about it. In a video message to officers last week, she also reiterated that police had been harassed and assaulted during protests. Best also went on to say in an interview on Friday on Good Morning America that officials had to remove some personnel for a short period, then it became unsafe for officers to go back. She also went on to say that officials are working to get officers back into the precinct, stressing the need to have officers responding to calls in a timely fashion. Now, some city council members and other elected officials say that authorities overreacted and both Durkin and Bess have faced calls to resign. Now, this story, again, was just an extension of the ongoing protests across the country as the tensions continue to rise in response to the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Now, are you all seeing stories like this in your areas? Or are things pretty much being done peacefully? I'd love for you all to drop down in the comments and let me know your thoughts. I'd greatly appreciate the feedback. Now, moving right along, my next two stories come out of California. Now, for the second time in two weeks, Southern California authorities have confirmed that they are investigating the death of a black man found hanged from a tree. The body of 38-year-old Malcolm Harsh was discovered shortly after 7 a.m. on May 31st in Victorville, San Bernardino County. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department spokeswoman Jody Miller said. She said that deputies had responded to the report that a male subject had hung himself near a homeless encampment. A death investigation is being conducted, the spokeswoman said. There were no indications at the scene that suggested foul play, and the cause and manner of death are pending. Now, the family members of Harsh, however, said in a statement to the Victor Valley News that they doubted that he killed himself. Quote, Malcolm had very recent conversations with his children about seeing them soon, and did not appear to be depressed to anyone who truly knew him. The statement continued, There are many ways to die, but considering the current racial tension, a black man hanging himself from a tree definitely doesn't sit well with us right now. We want justice, not comfortable excuses, according to the statement." End quote. Now, meanwhile, Roughly 50 miles away in Los Angeles County, the family of Robert L. Fuller, a 28, I'm sorry, a 24-year-old black man, was also found hanged from a tree near Palmdale City Hall just this past Wednesday. Now, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department said on Saturday that Fuller's death appeared to be a suicide, repeating the initial findings made by local authorities. Loved ones there said they do not believe that Fuller would have committed suicide. In a Facebook post by a family member by the name of Harmony Harsh, which was the uh, family member of the first victim, it reads, Malcolm Harsh, 38, was found dead, hanging from a tree in Victorville, California on May 31st, 2020. The Victorville Police Department has been attempting to report his death as a suicide to the family. A detective from the department called and stated there was no foul play suspected even prior to the autopsy, which was not performed until 12 days after his body was found. Malcolm Harsh was six foot three and was found with blood on his shirt, hung by a USB cord. Four afters, I'm sorry, four hours after he was reportedly stopped by a Victorville police officer. 
there have been at least three other reports of suicide by hanging of black men near the Victorville, California area since 2012, including the June 10th, 2020 hanging of Robert Fuller in Palmdale, California, which is only 52 miles away. Mr. Harsh's family is looking for answers. These hangings of black men in such close perimeter, all ruled suicide cannot be coincidental. Assistance from any news outlet, blog, or social media source is appreciated. Malcolm Harsh's life mattered. Please help us find the justice Malcolm deserved. Now the death of Robert Fuller led to that was the end of that post by the family member, by the way. Now, moving right along. The death of Robert Fuller led to protests just this past Saturday. And public officials call for an independent probe there. Authorities have actually said the death appears to be a suicide but the investigation is ongoing and coroners have yet to complete a full autopsy. The LA County Sheriff's D Department announced that the death was believed to be a suicide. And of course it was immediately met with outrage from community members during a news conference on Friday. Fuller, who was found by a passerby -er, on Wednesday was described as a sweet young man who grew up in the Antelope Valley with a supportive family. The case has drawn national attention and impassioned reactions online with more than 128,400 people signing a change.org petition demanding that a full investigation and the release of surveillance footage be released. An online fundraise, fundraiser to help Fuller's family with burial expenses raised more than $184,000 on Saturday, far surpassing its goal of $100,000. And also during Saturday's rally, a growing crowd of demonstrators came together for a moment of silence, raised their fist in solidarity, and marched from the park where Fuller's body was found all the way to the sheriff's station, according to the Associated Press. Now, Diamond Alexander, which I believe they reported was a cousin, but then I also saw that it said she was a sister. So I'm going to just say a family member, Diamond Alexander, spoke to the crowd in the courtyard behind Palmdale City Hall. The LA Times reported, um, and they say the deaths come as the country is reeling from the in-custody death of George Floyd in Minneapolis and amid international Black Lives Matter protesters against police brutality. You know, they have all these protests going on pretty much all over the country as a result of the incident that occurred in Minneapolis and then you have all these little miniature incidents um, rising up out of these protests. Now, these two deaths here out of California, really, they didn't have anything to do with the protests. This was just like something totally out of the blue. I hadn't even heard of it on my uh, local media. I heard some hints of it online, so I researched it further. Are you all familiar with this case with these um, young African-American men now being found hung in California? If so, drop down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Um, this is very disturbing. Also, Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Kohler took to IG for that story to call for people to march and rally for answers outside of the Palmdale City Hall and authorities are asking anyone with information in this case either one of those two cases to contact the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Homicide Bureau at area code 323-890-5500 now lastly y'all out of Atlanta Georgia 
we have the story of Rayshard Brooks. Rayshard Brooks was shot twice in the back on Friday, June 12, 2020, according to a release by the Fulton County Georgia Medical Examiner's Office. Brooks died from organ damage and blood loss from the two gunshot wounds, according to the Medical Examiner's Office, and lists the manner of death as homicide. Protesters in Atlanta took to the streets there in Atlanta and elsewhere around the country again today. Today. And in Atlanta, they gathered at the fast food restaurant where Brooks died Friday. The restaurant was torched by protesters yesterday and the Fulton County District Attorney criticized the police officer's handling of Brooks' fatal shooting and said that a decision on whether or not to bring charges could come as early as Wednesday of this coming week. Brooks, age 27, was shot dead by an officer on Friday night at a Wendy's drive through in the city after police moved to handcuff him for suspected driving under the influence, according to videos from the scene. Now, the videos show that Brooks took an officer's taser during an attempted arrest and then fired the taser at the officers as he ran away. Now, one officer then fatally shot Brooks three times with his service weapon, the authority said. The killing has had rapid repercussions in ATL, and, you know, that's one of the many cities where protesters have called for an end to police violence and racism in the wake of the George Floyd police killing in Minneapolis. <sighs> The officers who shot the officer who shot Brooks was actually fired, and the police chief Erica Shields resigned as exasperated protesters called for justice in this case. Now, on Saturday, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottom said she did not believe that Brooks' death was a justified use of deadly force. Now, Garrett Rolfe. The officer who killed Brooks was terminated on Saturday, and police said that there was a second officer involved in the killing, Devin Bronson. He was placed on administrative duty. The district attorney, Paul Howard, said that possible charges could include murder, felony murder, or involuntary manslaughter. Brooks has three daughters, ages one, two, and eight along with a 13-year-old stepson. You all. There is a lot going on. I mean, there is just so much going on. And I really wish that I was coming to you all with a weekly recap on so much more of a positive note. But unfortunately, it is what it is. You know, if you are feeling distressed or concerned over the loss of a loved one or over a loved one's well-being, help is definitely available through the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. They also provide free and confidential emotional support 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Um, or you can also call a loved one or maybe contact a member of the clergy or even 911. You know, we have to lean to one another during these trying times. Like I said, I wish I was coming through and recapping some happy moments and just on a much more positive note. But unfortunately, um, we are seeing these crazy outlandish negative acts just continue to be on the rise. I think it's very important that we shine the light on them and that we talk about them and make sure that these people that lose their lives are not forgotten about. Okay. Um, and that is one way that we can make sure that doesn't occur. And that's by keeping their names out there, not allowing for this to be swept under the rug. You don't necessarily have to be out there protesting in the streets, but just sharing information and speaking up 
and standing in solidarity for the rights of everyone. Um, this is important, y'all. So I want to thank you all for taking a moment to click on this video. I am Pandy of Pandy's Hair Candy and More. If you didn't do so on your way in, please don't forget to blow dry on my like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Please like the video. Please comment on the video down below and please share. And if you enjoyed this commentary, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It is free 99. All right, y'all. You all have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there. Stay encouraged. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye now.